What's up, everybody? It's Kaylin Moss, Theory and Thacker here, and we're the Minute Admin Crew, and we are still talking about these four loops. Um, we're just basically yesterday we were breaking down for loops and we actually got into a really good discussion about data and how important data is. And I never really broke it down to the granular level, kind of like yesterday after Therian was talking about it. So if you missed that, go check that video out. Um, also, if you aren't a part of our Facebook group, what are you doing? You got to join our Facebook group. <laughs> you got to join the mailing list. You got to join the course, everything like that. Join the Facebook group first and foremost, because if you are trying to find a community of marketing cloud professionals, then honestly, that's the place to be at because there's a lot of questions going on in there. There's a lot of answers going on in there. And this is the group. So marketing cloud super users. I honestly want to change this, but there's some updating. So, but this is probably what you'll see right now. We have a bunch of people in here. So if you, do I mean, you've earned some wrinkles since then. So we we got to update that picture. <laughs> I think this was. Uh, I was like 24 when this. Uh, when this uh, you got some laugh lines now, buddy. Listen, we need yep. to update that picture. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Thanks to you. Oh man. Absolutely. But yeah, you know, just wanted to shout out the Facebook group because to be honest, like you need a community. Like I can't help every single person. Therian can't help every single person. Right. The community can help every single person. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. I've been getting a lot of messages on LinkedIn, a lot of messages on Facebook. Um, outside of the group. And I'm going to highly encourage everybody to go to that group um, and join and ask questions there. Right. So um, that's going to be kind of my default response from here on out is any questions you do have about marketing cloud, let's get them in the Facebook group. And, yep. and honestly, theory and any questions you get, let's just push people yeah. in the Facebook group. Let's get everybody in there. So we can just, yeah. we can have everybody seeing the same questions yep. on, their, on their own personal journeys. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, okay. All right. So we have, what we're talking about today is we're just finishing up the, um, I'm going to set the timer cause I haven't said it yet. Let's see. What is it? 30, 39 minutes. What is that? Yeah. Uh, you're good. It's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> happy Friday, by the way, everybody. Happy Friday. We need to come up with a, with a good term for that one. Well, I don't have good. one yet. <laughs> but, uh, there's been there's been so many that are just completely destroyed. We gotta we gotta refresh it. We gotta yes. refresh it with our own lingo. Yep. We have to. We have sure. to. Um and but yeah, honestly, yesterday, man, your session about data was amazing. So now my brain is kind of thinking in that sense. Yep. We also have this exercise, this AMP script for loop challenge. Um, and this is the challenge. Yesterday, we used ChatGPT to uh, create the code for this. And we created the code for this. And we're looking to create a code for this now. But what I want to do real quick is let's just break down these first two, kind of like we did yesterday with uh, the AMP script guide. And let's break down that code. So I'm going to go to Web Studio, Cloud Pages. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, yeah, I'm sharing that tab. Okay. And the loop challenge. Because we were running into an error, I think, right, on the third one? Yes. Um, so we have chat GPT block one. And the first block. I'm just going to share both sides of the screen. So I am going to, it's going to stop sharing for a second and then it's going to present entire screen. Okay. So can you see these well, Therian? Yeah, I can. You're good. You're good. Okay. So the first one we have using a for loop, create a comma separated string of characters that go from one to 10. So to produce this output of a, of a string of characters going from one to 10, here's what, what it was. Amp script code block. Okay. And I'm going to break this down and you tell me 
you tell me if I'm saying this right. Just make corrections where I where I walk through and you see. Yep. I got you. If I'm not that <clears throat> sure. So I just want to make sure. No, you're good. All right. So what I'm seeing here is when we run a, we're running a for loop. That's the first thing I notice. First thing I see. So I know we're looping through something to, <clears throat> we're going and finding something we're looping through. Right. And I also see that we have an if statement and we're saying a certain condition has to be true. If a certain condition is true, give this value. If it's, if it's false, give that value. Or, or, or let yeah, me absolutely. Say I mean, absolutely. You're exactly right. And yeah. I'm going to say one other thing and tell me if I'm right on this. You have an if statement that can say, if this condition is true, here's the value we'll return, right? Mm -hmm. If, and then you have the else if, which is, if this value is true, return that. And that if, that's exactly right. And, and, but, and, and right here it's saying, uh, instead of else if, also end if the value is this. Um, you know, re return this value. So what is the, how does the end if differ? So, so else if versus end if, Let, let's really define it here. So I don't, uh, I don't get in trouble. Let's see here, else if amp script. If then else, if end if. <laughs> 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 that's probably Wait. the worst document <laughs> no bro look this might actually be good <laughs> <laughs> okay here, here we are i'm just gonna go off your screen so if okay logical expression right then here's our statement wait there's some sort of version it's the if then else if end if if this then this happened else yep. uh do this if okay syntax i wish it was uh, instead of else if and end if i wish it was if else and if end i wish it was the opposite way around i'm not <laughs> not even gonna fib to you yep okay so what do we got here we got if there's our logical expression then do this so our statement. break this down break this down little by little for the people out there including me and then yep. let me let me break it down and then no, you, you break it down for me you break it down for me hit me and I'm going to just say, I'm just going to take an example of, let's just say we're selling a house in Malibu, right? And just remember, we're, all we're doing is building conditions and statements here. That's okay. Mm -hmm. So let's say we're selling a house out in Malibu, California, right? Right. We, we, we're, we're real estate agents and we're selling a home. Yep. If I win the deal, if I, if I sell the house, if the house, if opportunity is closed and won, if I won the deal... Then, um, like you get your bonus, you get, you get, you get, yeah, you get a bonus, full paycheck. percentage bonus, full you get a percentage, percentage bonus. bonus paycheck of, yeah. um, let's just say like 0.5 or 0 0.05 times the price of the house. Yep. Else if you win this deal with an agent, another agent, uh-huh. Mm -hmm then you get 3% of uh, the price of the house as a bonus. Yep. Else if you win with two other people, mm -hmm. then you get 1% of right. the price of the house. And you can keep going and you can say, else if you were just the paper, uh, paper writer, the, yep. the underwriter yep. on the thing, you get... 0.008% of the price of the house and else what is why does it have else if versus else i mean we're you see how they've just finally given up and started putting in dots because you you can literally continually build these expressions out as far as you as far as you want right so that they they literally run out of logical expression one, two, and three. Um, this would be logical expression four with the following statement or this other conditional statement. Um, and then and then we end we close it up because if none of those things have been covered, you're not getting a bonus. Gotcha. Yep. And then okay, so then 
end the if statement because there's nothing we're else to really. Yeah, there's, there's nothing there's else. There's no other criteria to look at. We've covered every condition and reward that you're going to get from this structure. And now we need to wrap it up. Gotcha. It's yep. So it's just literally looking for. <laughs> That's it. Gotcha. And once again, I, I don't want to specifically state Boolean, but we're just looking for zero in one expressions, right? One means it's fulfilled. Zero means it's not fulfilled. Oh, and it's just checking those conditional statements as it goes down to give you the bonus that you deserve. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. the if statement is the, is the, it's searching if criteria is true. And if yep. it is true, it's placing a specific type of value or it's producing a specific outcome Absolutely. Into, a, into a different area. Like it's yep. pushing a different process to start or it's, inserting a, a piece of data into a, a different type of field or mm -hmm. whatever, right? Okay. Yeah. And then now we're adding a counter in there, right? So we can just conditionally keep going through these rows, these columns, these blocks until, gotcha. we, hit the, until we hit the end. Yep. And then if you put those conditions into a for loop, what you're saying is, Repeat that process mm -hmm. over and over again, over and over and over for again. a certain amount of times. Right. God. Now, now remember, in each one of these blocks, we could actually have multiple expressions to check the validity of each one of those blocks before counting to the next one. So we see a whole bunch of conditions here. That all of those conditions can count for one block before we loop to the next one. So it's up to us how complicated we want to make that. Okay. And yeah. like you said yesterday, that comes from knowing the end result of what your client wants, what yep. your customer wants, and right. really just understanding the bigger picture they're looking for and figure, reverse engineering and figuring out what data do they have that will get you to that answer. Mm -hmm. And what I guess the second thing is this, what does the client want? Mm hmm what are the metrics and the KPIs they need to see to ensure that this is actually occurring? Correct. And that they can measure that. Yep. And then based on that, what is the data that they have to, to get them to that end result with the automation tools we're going to utilize? hundred percent. Imagine this, imagine, imagine you're going to build this out and you're like, yes, I'd love to do all of these things for you, make this happen. And then you go to the data and you're like, well, you haven't collected the data. Uh, I've, I, I need to even make this happen for you yet. So we need to really start before this is, the, you know what I mean? So we have to expect those things, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What if okay. they want you to do something they don't even have yet? <laughs> yes. Yes. So I see this now. I see what you're saying now. Yeah. We're saying... Well, let's just first go into the very little tiny area here. We're saying the first if statement we're looking at is just this alone right here. Yep. So if result, if this variable called result ends up not being blank, then set it to concatenate. Mm-hmm on itself with yep. a comma right after it yep that's ex you're exactly right man great job that's a great job yep and let's thank you i appreciate that yeah that's yeah. better than i could have put it man, it's, hey, it's literally yeah, just so good it, it's literally just saying yo drop a comma if you uh see this happen <laughs> right <laughs> gotcha yeah okay so concatenate it concatenates the string. Hey, Josh, what's going on, buddy? What's Happy up, Josh? Friday. Happy Friday, my friend. And hey, we got a we got a Josh article drop in here pretty soon, man. Uh -oh. we, got a, we got his story coming out pretty soon. Let's bro. do it. Let's do it. I'm excited for the world to see. I, I'm also uh, I just I'm also going to be including Josh into the uh, launching of our Discord channel for everybody. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, so we've got, sir. We've got some testing to do, some finalizations, and then we're going to roll it out for the community. Yep. Yep. Josh is an extremely valuable resource for anybody in the community who needs help or guidance on anything marketing called shoot anything Salesforce too. He started his career yep. doing the Salesforce side of things. So Salesforce or marketing cloud. Yeah, reach out to him. It's yeah. Just one of the most friendly guys ever. Yep. Yep. 
Heck yeah, and most consistent too. He's on oh, here. Absolutely, he's here with us all the time, listening to us. Yep. <laughs> no I matter if we're him. making progress or not. <laughs> yes. Hey, he know he knows every day's process uh, progress one percent <laughs> better. Because right. uh, now our conversation yesterday brings me to sometimes we need those, you know, and yeah. and I think that that's studying too. Uh, studying is learning. I believe yes. studying is anytime you're learning. Um, include as many values as necessary. It's it concatenates the strings that are specified in the arguments. So the ordinal, the thing in the first value is the thing to concatenate. And then the second thing to concatenate. Now, what is the word concatenate? Concat. The okay, first time I ever heard that word was definitely a spreadsheet. Not even, yes. a, not even a fifth view. Yeah. Yep. Concatenate links things together in a chain, chain or, or series. series. Mm -hmm. Translation of more definitions. Some words may be concatenated such that certain sounds are omitted. Link together. Let's see. What's an example? Let's see. The concatenation of two or more numbers is the number formed by concatenating their numerals. For example, the concatenation of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7, 8 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So compound is another yeah. term for it. I have worked with some Excel wizards that use concatenate like it's just a word they use every day, man. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I live data. I live, <laughs> I live data. <laughs> I'm, I'm just always waiting for somebody to roll up their dress shirt and there's just a data tattoo on their arm. <laughs> they love it, man. They love it. <laughs> like I bleed data. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, Dude, data's the new oil, man. It is, man. It is. More than we can even begin to understand. Yes. Yes. We just have to start getting good at it, man. I, I, we have. That's where the relationship begins for our job. Yep. Yep. If you're running a business and you don't, you're not collecting as much data as you possibly can in the most smooth and streamlined, consistent way... You're not only are you letting down your customers, but you're letting down the guys in the back room trying to get this data to work for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. It's, it's a it's a rough patch. Yep. <laughs> you know, it is. If you don't have your data right. Okay, so I'm getting the if statement. I get that. Now heading back out. So it's saying if the result for some reason doesn't equal uh, a blank, then set that to concatenate mm -hmm. on the result you find, which is going to be the one right here, right? Because right. we're counting, we're doing that loop statement. We're yep. doing that. And then uh, comma. Yeah, so, at, so remember, we got our result, comma. And look how he wrote it. Let's look at it, his. Mm -hmm. So output concatenate at I. I equals equals 10. So if at I is true to 10. I don't know. Well, that's a, that's interesting. For the at loop? I, okay, yeah, that's our loop. One yeah, to and 10. It's the output that gets me. There's a that's lot of I... brackets and commas in there. <laughs> 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 so we got output concatenate at I, which we just set for one to 10 to do this, uh, it, if at i is true or equals equals 10. Okay, what does output do? It returns the results of AMP script code that's been executed in a code block, such as a concatenate. Okay, so it returns the results of that concatenate or a V uh, function, the V lookup basically. Right. And it includes the results inside of the rendered content. The function does not return any past direct. Okay. So the first thing is that we just need to know is it returns the results of the code that's been executed inside a code block. Right. 
It's just saying return the results. That's it. It's really messy looking though. I'm not even gonna fib to you. So it is this this parenthesis and that far parenthesis. Mm-hmm. Now the concatenate we know is concatenating everything inside of here. I think it's hard for us. It's hard for myself to really look at it because there's no data that I'm specifically wanting to see in there. It's just a a bunch of markings. You know what I mean? Right. Yep. So there's this there's this other website that has it's called the amps it's called ampscript.com. The concat function concatenates strings together. You can concatenate as many values as you want together. A good use case would be to combine an amp script variable, a variable with mm-hmm. a hard coded string. Gotcha. So a variable we've set with a string. Okay. We know a string is any, we know a string can be a number. It can right. be anything in the quotations, mm-hmm. right? So for example, if you have the salutation of an email, that needs to be combined with a first name value. Right. So we set the first name value to Jackson, that string there. If the first name for some reason is blank, then set um, the salutation to go and join together the word dear and the first name. Mm-hmm. And then also put a comma all together. Dear first name, comma. And it'll go and it'll find Jackson if that, if, uh, I don't know why they said at first name equals Jackson. So if at first name. Oh, here's what we'll do. Okay. Else set the salutation. Um, yeah, set- that's our. If it's not Jackson, is that what it is? If it's for some reason, if it's blank, it's saying for some. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Listen, listen. Okay. This is it. This is it. Okay. If first name is not blank, meaning first name has Jackson in it because it's not blank. Right. (coughs) Then set this salutation we're about to do to go and find dear Jackson comma. Yep. If else, if it's anything other than not blank, meaning if it, why don't, I don't understand why they didn't put it. If, if, I don't understand why they just chose Jackson. Like that is uh, like, I, I guess what I wanted first name to be is like, if there is no first name at all, um, yeah. Then return dear valued customer or dear customer. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a it's a very specific example right here. <laughs> but you see how you can just change the syntax that fast and, it, yes. and make it opposite versus the way the way you think you could switch it up on any given day. Oh yeah, absolutely. So else set this if anything else other than it not being like if it is blank basically is what's saying else if it is blank say dear customer. And then that's the code block for what to go and do. And then it's saying, now I'll go to this AMP script V lookup of what salutation should be. Mm-hmm. And then the output is dear Jackson. Okay. Gotcha. Well, I mean, the article was published by Jackson. So <laughs> that makes more oh. sense now. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I appreciate you, Jackson. Thanks, Jackson. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> so we we okay that's fantastic so we were looking at concatenate i mm-hmm. think we know okay so concatenate is saying i'll put the concatenation of these string variables so inside yeah. or this the variable and the string and saying concatenate this stuff and what it's saying is it's saying go and find i first which is one and if I is equal to 10, yep. put a blank, put a blank there, put yep. nothing, put, put, nothing, Basically, yeah, yeah, put nothing, comma, 
and then put a comma right comma. there. Yeah, and then a comma. Yep. But at the same time, okay. I, I see what I, I kind of see, but I don't really get it. There's just not enough. I don't think there's enough information in there for us to really get a strong grasp on, on what we need yeah. uh, because we're, we're, we're returning blanks. I mean, for the, for the most part. Yeah. And if it's not a blank, we return a digit with a comma. Um, yeah. That's some ugly code. Not even going to lie. That is, <laughs> that is, that's some ugly code. Yeah. But so, but of course we're just teaching these little blocks, right? We're just we're teaching each mm -hmm. block individually or returning a string of numbers. So mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. So this would say we're about to do a loop. Mm -hmm. we're saying do a loop uh, ten times. Yep. And output the line. And so let's see that. So we have output, but then you have output line, amp script. Telling you, there's something about this website I just really like. This developer website. It's nice. It it's is. Nice. It is much nicer than the other one. Yeah. And it, honestly, it's just the UI. That's the yeah. only big difference. Yep. yep. That's it. It has all the same content. Yep. It's, it, it, honestly, it's duplicate content, just softer. It's yep. just It's more inviting. And what? And it's amazing that we can realize that that little difference makes us go to one website over the other. Yes. Yep. Yes. It really does. <laughs> it does. It does. So important. Returns the, the output line returns the results of AMP script code executed in a block, just like output. Yeah. And it includes the results inside the render content. The function also appends at CRLF following the results. The function does not return any past during... CRLS. -L -L CR. What is that acronym? Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what does that say? Read that to me. CRLF -R refers to the special character elements called carriage return, return and line yeah. feed. Interesting. These, These elements are embedded into HTTP headers and are and offer other software other code. To signify an end of line marker. Okay. C R L F. I'll never remember that, but I, I'm just going to put it in my brain as, as it ends the HTML, HTTP headers for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess it, it yeah, it says this is the end of the line. Oh. End of the line. That's how I'm going to, it's what becomes right before the end of the line. That's how I'm just going to put it in my brain. <laughs> yeah. So if somebody asks me, I'm like, yeah, that's right before the end of the line, right? <laughs> Oh, I guess it just moves the cursor to the next line. That's that's amazing. You're what an acronym to, to for that to be it, right? <laughs> Is that what you're doing when you press the return key? The hey, I, I, I mean, in a sense, yeah. We are, are, are but we're you, telling the computer to do it. You know, you, we're telling our system to do it. Uh-oh, here we go. Uh-oh. Okay, it's different, it says. Okay, so carriage return is the enter key. Hey, Naga. We're just covering some uh, for loops. What's up, Naga? Yeah, we're going deep, man. We're going we're going into for loops. We're going into the syntax of everything, just to make up a for loop. It's a lot. So this guy is talking about CRLF line endings, understanding and fixing the invisible characters. How do you between, between lines. the lines? <laughs> you want to watch this one? Sure, let's check him out. See what, see how he is. Let's see what he's talking about. Can you hear it? Nope, no volume. Okay, one second. Yeah, you're ready. If you've ever run into issues where Git diffs were yelling at you for changing things you didn't even touch, or you've seen weird characters at the end of your lines throwing off your code, um, line endings is probably the culprit for that. So to show you what I mean, I've set up a folder right here. And in this folder, I have two files, crlf.txt and lf.txt. And at first glance, if we look at the contents of both of these files, they seem to be the exact same. The exact same lines are in crlf.txt and the exact same lines are in lf.txt. Okay. If we take a closer look and run a diff between these two files, 
we'll find that diff doesn't like it. Both files or both lines in both files are not the same. So the reason for this is line endings, but before we get into fixing it, let's understand what line endings are first. Okay. Line endings or line terminators are the invisible characters at the end of new lines. So while we don't see a character every single time we hit in the enter key, the computer needs a way to represent the start of a new line. Um, these characters can vary between different platforms. So this causes compatibility issues or sometimes unforeseen <laughs> effects, such as the aforementioned giant diffs with no apparent change. So there Max. are two characters that represent line endings. One is the carriage return, AKA CR backslash R, caret M or hex zero D. And this represents a cursor movement back to column zero. So to show you what I mean, if I have a line of text and my cursor happens to be at the last position, if I enter the carriage return key, my cursor will move all the way back to the first column right here. And on the other hand, we also have the line feed character. Line feed, aka LF, backslash N, dollar sign, or hex zero A, represents a cursor movement directly downward. So okay. it would look like this, going from here to here. Mm. So again, for review, a carriage return brings your cursor from any position in the text back line to the, first. to the first column, like so. And line feed brings your cursor straight down. Now, Windows uses CR and LF to represent line endings, but everyone else, literally everyone else, uses a single line feed character. <laughs> so as you might have guessed, this does cause some problems when handling files on multiple operating systems. <laughs> so now that we have a basic idea of what line terminators are, how do we check for line endings? So there are a couple ways to do it, but the file command is probably the most simple and basic. The file command explicitly states where there are CRLF endings, but says nothing otherwise. So in our example, if we check the file type of the lf.txt, it will just okay. say ASCII text. But if we check the crlf.txt, it will say ASCII text with CRLF line terminators. This is the clearest indicator of CRLF line terminators being present. But if we want to be a little more thorough and actually see the line endings themselves, we can use the cat command with the dash V or dash E option. Wow. So if we hop back over the terminal and look at what these options do, first looking at dash V, dash V shows the non-printing characters, but excludes line feed and tab. So if there is a carriage return present, it will print that. Dash E on the other hand, um, it's equivalent to dash VE, but it just shows the line feed at the end of each line as well. So if we look at the same files with the cat command now, first I'll start with dash V. CRLF.txt now shows the carriage return character, but still leaves off the line feed character. So if you want to see that one as well, we can do cat dash E, and then it will show both hmm. carriage return and line feed. I prefer the dash V option. I think it's a little cleaner, but the dash E option is there for you as well. So now that we know how to view line endings, how do we fix line endings? So there are a million ways to do this, but I think the simplest and most reliable way is to use DOS to Unix or Unix to DOS. Um, it might require an install depending on your platform. There is a homebrew package, there's a Nix package, there's packages everywhere. Or if you prefer, you can compile it from source. All the links are in this document which you can check out later and will be linked in the description below. Okay. So to show you how to convert line endings, I'll switch back over to my terminal and we'll check that crlf.txt does indeed still have crlf line terminators. And we want to convert it from DOS format, aka Windows, to Unix. So we run DOS to Unix on crlf.txt and that should now print out that it does not have crlf line terminators. Great, so we just have ASCII text without the crlf line terminators edition. Similarly, if we want to convert from Unix format to Windows format, we can run Unix to DOS on the same file, and we will see that we have the CRLF line terminators once again. So as I mentioned, there's quite a few ways to do this. Wow. Um, you can use sed, you can use translate, you can use vim, but I'll leave that up to you. So now we know how to convert line endings on a single file. We can also configure git to automatically normalize all of our line endings. Hmm. So how do we do that? First, you want to configure git so that it locally uses lf endings. So you're just going to run this command right here, git config global core auto crlf true. This is similar to the um, git config global user.name or email if you've ever messed with those. So I'll just go ahead and copy this command on over to my terminal. Um, so it ran successfully, but if you want to double check the value, you can just leave off the true and it'll tell you what the value of that config object is. So now Git will automatically set up your line endings locally. 
However, I really, really highly recommend that you configure it per your Git repository right. via a Git attributes file. So all we have to do is create a Git attributes file, which will act as kind of a config file for the way Git behaves in your project and add this one line of code. So I'll go ahead and make this folder a Git repository now and create the Git attributes file. Paste that one line in, which essentially says, Everything that's a text file gets <laughs> auto CRLF formatted. Yep. So now I'll just save and quit. And now that we have a Git attributes file initiated, we can add all of our files. Now this warning message might scare you and look reversed by saying LF will be replaced by CRLF, um, but it's actually okay. This just means that line endings are getting normalized when you check in and check out of your repository. So if you want to read more on that, there's a really good Stack Overflow link. Gotcha. Um, linked in the repo. You'll never think about the um, enter button the same way again. Yeah, you? you can read this if you are interested in getting all the details on that. So back to our code, um, git <clears throat> attributes. That's interesting though. You want to keep watching it? Yeah, I, I think we're good. I think we're good before we get any further into git, which is just creating a function to clean up all of your repository that you have. Yeah, so, okay. That gives a good found, like, some of this stuff, as I was going through it, I was like, it's good to know some computer science fundamentals, I feel yes. like. Mm -hmm. On a small basis, even if it's not anything crazy. Just the basics. Just to, yeah, yep. just basic. Just to understand, like, what's happening behind the scenes when things aren't working in AMP script. Right. I don't so, think I've ever had such a deep dive on the enter button ever than that video right there. <laughs> it's just the enter button. The enter just button. the enter button, right. Just the enter button. Woo! Yeah, no, I got this is out of the SFMC uh, session. We're just uh, we're doing a deep dive into, yes, into every piece of code that we can. Yep, we are going. We were literally looking at computer science, like that's how deep yep. we were getting into it. So, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a couple layers deeper than the AMP script we've been looking at, but I did think that was helpful. Um, this is. The output line, the reason why we watched it is because we read this. Yep. So we were trying to figure out the function where it said the function also appends a CRLF, CRLF. Yep. following the results, which we know now is just the next line. Control return is goes to the front, the first space of the line, and then um, line, what, what is it? Line... What's it called? CRLF. It is. <laughs> is like it? it's it's what happens before the end of the line. That's all. I'm line feed. Line, line feed. feed. Yeah. <laughs> so we have so we have output. We looked at output, and then we also looked at output line. So we have output and output line. So notice how output it, uh, but look at the bottom. Note that the system outputs the CRLF after the string of text, mm -hmm. even for output. Right. And then output line. Um, was I on this tab just now? I was looking at output and I was showing there it how that's. that the system outputs. Yep. And then output line. The system appends a CRLF character to the string of text, not an HTML break tag. In a text context, this character creates a new line. In an HTML context, this character creates a new line in the original SMTP message, but not a rendered new line. Okay. So then we have, we have this concatenate. So technically what, um, what was written over here, we don't necessarily need output, do we? Because that we could, after the end of the code block, we could put what we have over here, which is the salutation at the right. like the V lookup. So he's just basically what he's doing over here is he's not using a V lookup or anything. He's just saying output it right here in the middle of the code block. Once you find it, mm -hmm. and then this one's saying, do this find this conditional if statement if. If the result isn't equal to zero or isn't blank, then set the result to concatenate the result and then a comma afterwards. 
And the result is going to be this loop of four, one, two, ten. Right. In the if statement, and then set the result. So in the if statement, so if if it was if it has a one, if it is let's say one, yep. then set it to <clears throat> set result equal to one with a comma. And then if the end the if statement, and then set the result to concatenate and the then, result you just found. Yep. And then the um, oh. Oh, I got it. The result, concatenate the result, which is nothing. Because the result is nothing. Right. Concatenate the result with the number. Concatenate right. nothing with the number. Yep, because what are we doing with I? We're just, we just we're looping one. We're sequencing, yep. And then... <clears throat> And then, then hit and us then, with the next eye. And then hit us with the next eye and run through yep. that again. Yep, that's it. So we're basically saying, okay, this is what we did. Look, this is what we did. We said set result to nothing. Yep. And then start this for loop here to go through one through 10. Just start that up. But down here, we're going to set this if statement. Now, inside that for loop, we're saying if the result um, is not equal to nothing. Yeah. So if it's if it actually has something there, if there's actually something there, then set the result to concatenate it on itself with a comma. Then end the if statement. And then set the result equal to set the result equal to itself, which I'm assuming is nothing with i. And then the result is the comma. It's nothing with a comma, which is right here mm -hmm. with an I. So it's, yeah. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You're good. It takes time, man. It's a new language. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, somebody's Ask me how good my Mandarin is. I, I zero. Like I have right. no Mandarin, right? So it, it that's like me sitting here breaking down a sentence in Mandarin. You know, I have no yeah. idea what's going on. Like I'm yeah. just trying to <laughs> break it down for myself. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. So this language is new, man. It's new to you, and it's still something that I'm learning every time you go back through it, and I go through it with you. Yeah. Um, yeah, because if you don't practice it you get really rusty and if you don't practice if you don't know it you def you're definitely rusty <laughs> yeah definitely rusty. i don't know about you man but i feel like uh i feel like even just taking the one week off that we have from it yeah like to study other stuff in marketing cloud development yeah i feel like it's i feel like i have um I feel like I need to be on it every day. A code, yeah. I mean, honestly, if we aren't speaking in another language every day, we aren't going to get it down. Yeah. Yep. And that's, there's one example I'm going to use for that. I've been writing with my left hand more and more okay. every day. So I'll journal at the end of the day and I, and I write with my left hand to journal. Yeah. And I was looking at my progress over the past like four or five days that I've been doing it consistently. Right. And yesterday was the first day that my handwriting was like, wow, like I made major strides and improvements across the whole entire board with my left hand. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, and it made me think this is how anything is learned. You have to just do it every you got it. Yeah. Day. You just got to force it. Yep. You, you just got to. And, and it's all, but it is awesome to like, look at that day one of your left hand writing to day now. Yeah. And you it just, just like I said, when we started streaming live, you know, every day, we're just doing it every day. Yep. Yep. Practicing. Getting better. Yep. yep. Practicing. Learning more. Well, it was a great session. Absolutely. Absolutely. Happy Friday, Naga. Josh, thanks for coming in. Everybody else that joined or was watching. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Yep. All right, Therian. All right. Happy Friday. Minute admin Talk out. To you later. Minute admin out. Yes, sir. See you later.